G'day and welcome back to Dark Souls of Gaming. Our Let's Play series here on Western Australia playing Farming Simulator 19. Alright, we are back. Yes, we've had an extended hiatus away um, due to a real life basically kicking us up the bum. But uh, we are get, trying to get back into it now. Um, for those of you who aren't aware that my, uh, my significant other, my wife, has uh, some medical issues and she's been having a tough time of late and then I've also had uh, a lot of work issues like as in uh, big work uh, requirements plus also a lot of work on my uh, volunteer work so all in all that's just meant that we haven't had a lot of time to get into farming sim or any of the other games for that matter uh, and what games I have gotten into has basically been just to re relieve a bit of stress and all that from the from the normal day-to-day -day life uh, and I've spent much of that on the division with my good friends JJ and DJ. Speaking of which, if you wish to join us on the division too, uh, just yell out on our Discord channel. Uh, we'd be more than happy to, to have some fun with you in the division. Anyway, I digress. So we are back here on Western Australia. We are currently taking a huge load of straw bales. And there you can see it. There's our big road train uh, into cargo here. Uh, this is from our big field 11 harvest where we harvested the wheat and then we decided to stupidly possibly um, bale all the straw and uh, we've already done about four truckloads of straw down here to Cargill um, and offloaded and uh, just got rid of them because the straw bales are basically doing us no good otherwise so we're just bringing them straight down here for sale. Uh, now they uh, netting is about ten thousand dollars per trailer, um, so a trailer load gets us around ninety thousand dollars. So that uh, that helps us. We've also already uh, harvested the cotton. Uh, I think that's field five or six. Uh, that has been harvested as we go around through the back here through the brush to offload, which you'll see in a second, um, and that brought in a fair bit of money. Um, from our cotton we got about 15 cotton modules I think it was off the field um, so that's all been completed and uh, with that money we actually got a good deal from our um, equipment supplier to trade in the Agco combine harvesters and grab some new ones which we'll get to very very soon all right in the meantime we are just going to go through the motions uh, and sell all these off we'll just slowly come through <clears throat> drive through the cell point a bit of time we don't try to rush this because um, otherwise it just ends in disaster both with the truck running into fences or something and uh, is also not unloading the bales properly I see the money going straight into our account which means we can continue to provide supplies we need for the farm particularly we're about to need to buy well we actually can buy it directly at the farm but we need to buy some um, and there we go seed and fertilizer now we're gonna, now we're gonna cut through the brush here because it makes our turn a bit easier we've actually petitioned for Cargill to um, widen up their northern and southern entrance areas to their uh, sales area uh, because we can't get in with our with our big road trains um, they have uh, said they'll consider it so we'll have to wait and see what happens there all right so insofar as the farm goes uh, we have been very very busy we've currently got three of our staff members they are seeding up feed, seed uh, seed they are seeding up field 11 see I haven't got any better at talking while I haven't been away I haven't been recording see um, anyway they are they are busy seeding 
and uh, they should be finished very soon actually um, which will be good hopefully they'll finish before dark and uh, we can pack everything up ready for a new day in the morning um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this guy back up there are probably one more load of straw bales to be offloaded we're probably just going to take the truck up park them next to the bales and we'll collect all those a little bit later um, but uh, for now that will probably be it and then we just got to look at what we've been doing around the farm so I'll bring up the mini map not that you'll be able to see all the detail but I can explain to you what's going on so currently we have field three is ready for harvest with corn so we need to get up there and harvest that problem being we don't have any um, harvesting equipment for corn at the moment so we are going to need to buy that so hence that's one of the reasons why we've uh, made sure we got rid of all our bales and got the money for that um, <clears throat> field 14 is ready with a cotton um, crop now that was a mistaken crop rotation that we put in there um, we didn't mean to actually put uh, cotton in there but anyway it's it's there and it's ready to harvest so we're gonna harvest that we don't want to waste the money we might get one or two bales probably one bale out of that field so that's okay and I think field field 9 which we're going past now is uh, ready to harvest as well it's a wheat crop um, so it's good to go uh, we're going up between the junctions of fields 2 and 11 so field 2 is where we had the cotton previously that we harvested and field 11 is what we're currently seeding as you can see the uh, the three staff members down there they're just at the bottom end finishing that off and field 12 is has just been seeded with soybeans and field one has been seeded with soybeans uh, what else have we got um, field 13 I think is ready to harvest with soybeans as well um, so basically what we're doing is we're doing a, a huge soybean crop rotation um, so all the fields basically going to go through a, a rotation of soybean and uh, and that will be what we do there our next goal is actually we want to buy field 15 um, and if not 15 perhaps field 20 um, so that's that's our next main goal to, to do with our with our money going forward. Um, I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to do that anytime real soon because of the price of the land, but uh, we'll see how that develops. Now, the other thing that's been going on, as you can see, it looks like one of the looks like they're on their way back. Actually, looks like they might have finished. So, uh, well, this guy possibly thinks he's finished. Yeah, he thinks he's finished. All right, uh, let's have to see which one he was. He was the left. Because there's one, one of these guys was a bit lazy and didn't finish off the field properly, but we might have to fix that up shortly. All right, um, the other thing we did was, as we just head back into the top of the field with this bloke, we also continued on and made some changes to the farm. Now, you would all be aware that we, we've gone through a, a phased building approach to some improvements to the farm. Uh, we, we did phase one was our uh, reallocation of the plot of land up there from field one and we've installed some uh, chicken coops uh, or chicken sheds, they're not really coops um, and that has actually completed um, so that's all well and good and we've also started phase two of that in fact we've basically completed phase two um, and we're ready to basically start phase three. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you up and show you all the changes we've done to the farm and uh, and just share that around. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop him here. He's finished for the day. So we're just going to shut him off. All we're going to do is we're going to jump in the Mahindra here and we'll actually go and have a look and see what changes we've done to the farm. Because uh, I, think, I think you'll like it. I certainly do like it. Um, probably not the greatest time of day to see it just about to go into uh, sunset but that's okay all right so here we go so as you can see we've revamped our entrance to the farm so uh, we've now got a nice well-defined entrance to the farm and I think this looks quite nice uh, I can't better than what I probably expected and what we're going to do is we're going to head down here we've got the gravel path all the trees and it just looks really really nice so coming through it's nicely shaded and this is what you see at a lot of the farms especially here in Australia 
Um, it'll be all quite barren and dry and all that sort of stuff. But the interest of the farm is always pristine and well looked after. So that's what we've sort of tried to do here. So we come down, there's a, there's a gate here before we get into the, uh, the farmyard proper uh, in case we want to uh, block off any entrance from any visitors. And it seems like we've got a lot of visitors running around the farm at the moment for no real apparent reason. So, uh, but anyway, that's it. So over here, if we go over here to the right hand, the left hand side over here, my other right, um, these big silver sheds were what were on this farm previously. Now, they're okay, they're a nice big shed and, and typical of sort of what we'd expect to see here in Australia, but um, we couldn't drive through them. So we removed those sheds over here and we had some new sheds installed. So we've now got some drive through sheds over here. Uh, and, and they've made a big difference to the way we gain access and store all our equipment. So as you can see, we've got a whole pile of equipment through here. We've got our, our tipper trailers there, our road trains, they're all stored up, ready to go, ready for the next harvest. Uh, we've got some of our equipment through here. So it's just maximised our storage and given us the ability to actually drive through um, with some of our bigger equipment because obviously we're using a lot of bigger equipment. Uh, off here to the left is our entrance area into where the chooks are. So uh, this isn't actually new through here per se, uh, but we have done some alterations in here as well. So part of the phase two was to install these orchards here. So we've got some orchards. These are not really for uh, commercial use. They're just basically for use of the farm for, for fresh fruit um, and produce and that for the farm to use over the year. Um, any excess will be sold obviously, but, uh, but that will come later on down the track. So there's our all our chicken coops over there. I think we've got seven big chicken sheds. I keep on calling them coops. They're a bit bigger than coops. Um, and then we've also installed in here a new silo. So this silo here is purely for holding uh, feed for the chickens at the moment. Um, so uh, it just means we don't have to go traipsing all over the farm to get feed. We can just dump the feed in here and it will be all ready to go. If we head on over here, we'll go and have a look at the chicken coop itself where it's producing all its eggs so we actually can see that they're uh, they're fully functional and uh, the, the chooks are quite happy they're uh, clucking along so we come in here into this shed we can see there's our all our egg pallet or egg boxes in our pallet and uh, that's filling up nicely so uh, we we'll have to be over here shortly and swap over or actually put in empty um, pallets so as they can continue to fill those up. All right, so that's uh, that area through there. Come back out through here. As you can see, there's some our soybeans over here on field one are, are just starting to come through. So uh, shouldn't be too far away and they'll be ready to harvest again. Uh, one of our other staff members has finished his seeding work, which is good. Now the other part we did, we uh, we came through here and we, we put a fence around um, just to sort of give it a bit more of an actual boundary uh, and we've also installed some lights. So it was very, very dark through here overnight um, and because we are doing some work that extends in the night time, we figured it was about time we had some uh, some better lighting through here so we, we insert, inserted that. We uh, When doing the fence work here, we actually also did a bit of groundwork over here, a little landscaping and we actually created a a formal entrance into field one from the farm um, which has been a very very handy thus far so uh, we we completed that which is good uh, here at the silos we uh, installed again some lighting um, just again so we can actually line ourselves up and, and clearly see what we're doing overnight if we're coming in here and doing any silo work and we put up a, a stone retaining wall here just to sort of uh, tidy up the area a little bit as well around through here with the silos themselves um, we've done a bit of an addition. We, uh, we've added in a few silos down the side here. We've added another five silos to increase our capacity and, uh, and that's all well and good. We are planning on tidying up this area a little bit as well. Um, that will come with time. We're probably going to end up uh, at least putting gravel over through here. Um, so it was, uh, when we get the rain, it's not so dirty. Uh, it doesn't make quite so much mess. But uh, that's what we're going to do there. All right, as you would have noticed, possibly as we came past the sheds, and I tried not to sort of make it obvious, we got some uh, some new headers in there for our combine harvesters. So let's go on and have a look at what our new delivery was. Um, anyone guess what we've got? I'm sure Chris Webb's not going to be overly impressed, but that's okay. I'm sure he'll get over it. There's, I can assure you there's no John Deere. 
Now, there is no John Deere on this farm except for uh, two plows. So anyway, here we go. So the new combine harvesters we've got. And if you guessed class, you were correct. All right, so we have now got some nice new class combines. These are a 2080 model, not really a realistic model as far as I'm aware, but anyway. Um, so these are our new combine harvesters. Now we did grab two of these on lease, uh, or on loan effectively, and we did test them out. They actually harvested um, field two, and they did a fantastic job. And so once we did that, we took up the option to buy both those units. And we also bought two new units as well. So we've got uh, two with tractors and we've got two with the front tracks. Now they are a 17,000 litre capacity combine, so they don't hold as much as the um, Agcos did, um, but uh, we got them at a good price and they're actually cheaper to run. Uh, and we have a local dealer that deals with class. Uh, he's one that supplies us with all the Xerions and the Axions and everything else, so uh, it made perfect sense. That leads me to another segue. Uh, obviously, while we've been away, Giants have announced the Platinum Pack, the Platinum DLC and the Platinum release of Farming Simulator 19, which of course includes a wonderful amount of class equipment. Now, I don't know, I've seen a couple of different people on YouTube have claimed, oh, we had an exclusive, we picked this, we knew it was going to be this, all this sort of stuff. No, yeah, pig's proverbial. It was quite obvious when the announced class was going to be a... Um, a partner and the big announcements they did make and the fact they were holding um, FarmCon at class headquarters it was obvious to every man and his dog that class was going to be the next pack out um, so this this is where it, it just it it makes me laugh personally when you see these people come out and say oh we exclusively picked that it was going to be this or whatever get over yourselves you morons all right so class it is so there's going to be 35 plus pieces of equipment from class um, there's a number already listed, I think they've already listed 22 uh, on the website. So there's at least another 13 or 14 to go. Now I reckon there's going to be a couple of uh, windrower. Um, there will definitely be, I would suggest, the new, newly announced um, class combine harvester, the 7000-8000 series. Um, and that looks like a beast. So that will be, uh, I'm pretty much guaranteed that'll, that'll be there. Pretty much guarantee it. Um, and, and other stuff as well. I, I would like to see the Cougar Mower, which is the five deck mower. Um, it's the big brother or the big opposition to the to the big M and the big M500, which we all love. Well, I do. Um, but it hasn't been in production for a number of years, so they may well not produce that, but it would be nice if they did. So, but anyway, so there we have it. So that's our new combines. So uh, they're all there ready to go. So we'll get them out very soon. <clears throat> And uh, we'll get into harvesting. Now, the cornfield, we're not going to harvest that for silage, I don't think. Uh, there's no point us having silage. We haven't got any cell points here for silage, all that sort of stuff. So we are just going to harvest the corn and sell it as a cereal crop, um, which will be fine. But we do need to buy some headers for that. So uh, that will be a bit more problematic because our well, combines are up here and the shop is down the other end of the, the map. Uh, it's a, quite a drive away, so we're going to have to get them transported up here for us. And I think we'll only end up getting the two headers anyway, because we don't need to have four combines doing that small cornfield um, for the moment. All right, so that's what we've got there, which is all fine and dandy. All right, let's jump into the Mahindra, and we'll go for a bit more of a, a quick recap tour. So in this main equipment shed, so this is where we store most of our primary equipment. Uh, we've got the case cotton modules over there. Two of them looking a little worse for wear, need a bit of maintenance. The other one's still looking brand new because I don't think I've actually used it. A um, couple of our tractors are in here. We've got one of our Xerions, we've got our Axion 900 and we've got the uh, the tractor class over there. He's up on the uh, on the hard stand ready to, to be lifted up and do some work. Over here in the heavy equipment shed we've got the Fent Tri-6 sitting there. It's had a service. We've got one of our Kenworths in there as well. So uh, we're all good to go with that. All right, so that's pretty much it. Oh, the other bit of equipment we did buy as well, obviously. Uh, we did invest in the headers for the combines, which are here. So these are, I think these were a 1275 header or something like that. Um, so, and we bought the header trailers for them as well. Uh, we bought the Splendemos uh, instead of buying, buying the Leguans because the Splendemos seemed to operate a bit better. 
and we have also purchased a another auger wagon we rolled the uh, the balls up i mean the balls are 2000 uh, so uh, we've been using that one very very fast uh, unloading on that thing all right so that's basically it for recapping and showing around the farm i think what we might do is we might uh, head back over and see what these guys are doing that have just finished their job and we might bring some of the equipment back in to the farm and then uh, it might be time to uh, transition to the next day it might be time to go to bed uh, we do need to do some lime work as well but i've been holding off that um, lime is uh, a pain in my side as far as i'm concerned at the moment um, but uh, anyway what we gonna do is also wait and see if we can get some fertilizer on some of these fields there we go look at that we got all three of our vehicles lined up there now what i do need to do actually we do need to tidy this up a bit so that's what we'll do as well we'll uh go over here i'll grab this guy here we'll unfold him and we'll just uh fix up this area through here <clears throat> so we'll just uh come around here and get in position because that's uh where we started off we had all the vehicles positioned there and we didn't actually start to sew so uh, we'll just bring him around we don't need that up there get rid of that All right, so we'll lower him and turn him on. And we'll just come on over here. And we'll go and quickly check to see what else needs to be tidied up because these guys are uh, a bit dodgy with some of their work. And, and like I said, I think some of them need to be um, let go. In fact, I, I think I'm going to do that. I think a couple of them are going to let go. Uh, I'm going to head down to the, uh, the Centrelink office uh, in town. Uh, Centrelink offices like our, our doll office, it's, uh, those that are unemployed obviously check in there to, to see if there's work. So I might just see if there's anyone available there that uh, works for peanuts and uh, or works for burritos or something and uh, and we'll see what we can get out of that. But uh, we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. So another, another couple of working hands would be handy. Uh, might be able to find a couple of imports. Uh, I know there's plenty of Kiwis hanging around. Uh, they hang around like a bad smell sometimes. But uh, we'll just get what we can get. I mean, after all, we just need someone to drive around for us. So it can't be that hard, really. So, But we'll just finish this one off here. And uh, and that will sort of lead us off into the end of this episode. Um, like I said, I do apologise for our delay in getting episodes out. Um, it's sort of a little bit out of my control. Um, but uh, hopefully we can get back into a rhythm now and uh, and continue to provide you with uh, with entertainment. Well, is it really entertainment coming from my channel? Oh, who's to know? We try. We try. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll definitely endeavour to, to get more stuff out. Um, there will be more stuff coming for obviously Farming Simulator 19. So there will be this series. The Fenton Forest series is about to continue as well. And it's going seasons. I have uh, updated the, sea, the Fenton Forest map to seasons. And that map will be the continuation for our Fenton Forest series. So uh, I hope you look forward to that one. Uh, we've got a lot of things to learn with seasons. Uh, we've barely scratched the surface with it. So uh, I know we've got to change the way we deal with animals and everything else. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see how we go. Um, I am going to bring seasons into Western Australia as well. Uh, my good mate JJ. Uh, he has spent some time developing a geo mod for Western Australia. Um, so he's, he's filled it up with all the correct data from the Western Australian agricultural businesses and stuff that are over there and the, and the government websites. So we've, uh, we've worked a little bit together in, in getting the right data for that. Um, and uh, and he, is, uh, he has shared that with me. He's also playing the Western Australia map himself. Um, so we will be playing western australia with a western australian geo so it will be custom made now no before anyone asks i won't be making that available um it that will entirely be up to jj at some point whether he wants to do that uh, he's the one that's created it um, it is still being fine-tuned uh, the latest update he gave me i think yesterday uh, has the cotton now working in it initially because there aren't any weren't any geo mods that had been released by the, when he had started um, he's sort of teaching himself and, and learning from scratch and uh, he was having some trouble with the cotton but we've he's worked that out so uh, cotton will be available as well 
Uh, sugar cane is not available in the Geo mod, but that's okay. We're probably not going to use sugar cane here because it's not really that realistic for WA. Um, but uh, we'll see how that uh, how that pans out. We could do an experimental crop. I mean, there's nothing to say that we can't do that. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's going to be exciting. Bringing seasons to WA. I mean, we don't have to worry about the the animals because we don't we're not doing animals here other than the chickens. Um, and they're in the chicken sheds anyway, so uh, there is no issue with with that and seasons um, But our crop rotations and all that sort of stuff will have to be done accordingly All right So we're going to continue on down through here. We'll finish this seeding off. There's a bit of a mess over there He's missed that area through there and around that island over there. He's missed as well. So uh, We'll crack on and get that done and uh, and then we should be uh, close to being finished <clears throat> now oh they're still sitting there as blocking so they're still I'm still paying them a wage even though they're sitting there doing nothing I just was looking at my money going down but that's okay alright what else is there <clears throat> you'd think there'd be lots to talk about um, oh the other one that's been released is the global company scripts now my good mate Andy uh, otherwise known as GTX um, he is also a member of LS Mod Company, as you probably would well and truly know. And him and Erebus and the guys over at uh, LS Mod Company have finally released the Global Mod Company, and it's going to be a game changer. It basically is full of scripts and everything else for our Farming Sim 19. It's going to help uh, with factory scripts and all that sort of stuff. Has some features in there which are very, very good. Uh, for in instance, it also includes the Forgotten Crops um, icons. Um, funnily enough, just before uh, I sort of had to take a bit of a break from this, um, I'd started recording a tutorial on how to install it because a couple of people had asked me on how to install it because I'd had it installed. Um, well, now you don't need to worry about it. You just install the forgotten crops and uh, and add that module in, and it's it's there. It's good to go. So it makes it nice and easy. Um, so we'll we'll probably end up doing a review of that uh, of the script and the and the basic stuff that that comes with it and we will uh, put that out as soon as we possibly can and we'll just explain what goes with that but uh, there is some exciting stuff that's going to come from and with that so uh, we're really looking forward to see what modders take with that and develop um, GTX uh, is, is, is a scripting powerhouse and uh, nothing has changed from farming simulator 17 some of the best mods in 17 uh, he had a hand in or created himself so we got the road train pack which was one of my most favored and used mods in farming simulator 17 um, the development console uh, mod where basically it's effectively like a in people use it effectively as a cheap console um, where you can actually go and change the state of fields and, and all that sort of stuff uh, without having to go into the actual game files um, what else was there uh, oh, of course the bale storage uh, units so the bale story sheds and barns um, all that sort of stuff uh, they they were made by GTX um, so yeah and I, I have got some uh, some information on what is what is coming in relation to some of that stuff uh, I'm not at liberty to release any information on that but rest assured uh, once I can I will uh, exclusively well, not necessarily exclusively, yeah, but possibly exclusively. <laughs> I'll let you know here first what is coming out uh, in that regard. But um, we're very glad and thankful for uh, for GTX uh, and Erebus and those at LS Mod Company for bringing that out. Um, and of course, we've got the Animal Pen Extension mod and stuff like that. Now, there are, is going to be an update coming for the Animal Pen Extension mod as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm quite okay to say that. So uh, more details on that will follow soon as well. Um, so yeah, really, really looking forward to that. Other stuff that's come out recently on the Mod Hub, there hasn't been a lot. We've recently had the um, the Mod Contest. I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, I was going to bring some, some content out on the Mod Contest. Um, but to be perfectly frank and honest, I was very disappointed with the quality and the content of what was released for the mod contest this year. I don't think it was very good and up to the standard of, um, for instance, the 17 crop. Um, so I didn't bother. Uh, it was 
really a disappointment. And I know some others felt the same thing. Um, but uh, we're not going to turn this one into a, a, a rant video. There is a rant coming, or it's not a rant, but there is uh, a state of the game video coming on Farming Simulator 19 and what I perceive to be the state of the game. Um, so that, and it's not just me, by the way. It's it's from some of you, my subscribers and, and viewers have uh, have partaken in, in a bit of a survey and given me some information and on some stuff that you your opinions and what you think um, and uh, and I'll be discussing all that when I do release that very very soon <clears throat> anyway that is about it we've been at it for 30 minutes and I think that's most of the stuff we've cleaned up now so uh, I think we're pretty much right to head back to the farm in fact before we do that we'll have a quick look we'll check see what the field's like uh, those little bits and pieces a bit over there so we'll go over and fix that and that'll be what we fix as we're doing our sign off um, but that will be it for this episode. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. We are uh, loving being back on Western Australia. It is a lovely map. We really, really do enjoy it. Uh, Deck and Kane did a wonderful job. I mean, obviously there's things that could be improved and all that sort of stuff. Um, we've now edited edited the map a little bit for our personal taste. There's a couple of other things I want to do to it as well. Uh, but it is a lovely map and it's very different in its look and aesthetics uh, to what we've got from many other maps. Um, so yeah oh that was the other big news thing that's the other big thing before I go many of you have probably already seen I have been uh, very very privileged and, and honoured to be given access to Stevie's Fenton Forest Times 4 map um, I'm one of the testers of the map uh, and it is a fantastic expansion on the original Fenton Forest let me assure you and uh, it works wonderfully with uh, with seasons and I'm having a ball testing that at the moment there's only I think there was three testers possibly four testers of the map um, and uh, and all of us have been blown away by it he's making changes to it continually um, and in fact one of the big changes he's doing at the moment is he's moved the farmhouse from the original location of the farm uh, from Fenton Forest 1 to a new location uh, and we're awaiting the updated files to uh, to have a look at that, test all that out. Uh, and rest assured, there will be a couple of uh, preview videos coming on that very, very soon. Um, and uh, I would love to share with you the brilliance of his map making and uh, the aesthetics and the feel that he puts into his maps. So uh, look forward to that, because I certainly will be. All right, that's it for me. Thanks very much for watching. We're just about to wrap up the seeding here and then it'll be time to head in for dinner and, uh, and then we can uh, hit the hay, so to speak. So that's it for me and uh, we've been here on Western Australia. So thanks very much for watching us. Don't forget if you're not already subscribed to the channel, continue to consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe, make sure you check that uh, alarm notification icon so as you are made aware of when new episodes are made available on the Ducks Early Gaming channel. And until next time, this is Duck Zorley, and no matter whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night, no matter where you are in the world, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and we'll see you again very, very soon back here at Duck Zorley Gaming. Take care. See you all later. Bye.